let me introduce you to our project. My name is Cornelia and I'm pursuing my bachelor's degree in biomedical engineering. In our science club, I'm social media coordinator. And I'm Olga, and I'm a student of dietetics at Warsaw Medical University, and my role in the team is project manager. Our, our science club comes from the Warsaw University of Science and Technology, and it consists of students of various levels of different faculties of study, like mechanical engineering, onc or computer science. Extensive river network in our city piques our curiosity and pushes us to create new solutions and innovations in the field of underwater technologies. Let's go to the workshop to meet our newest team an autonomous underwater vehicle called UNIMO. Let's dive into the details of its functionalities. The construction of the robot is based on a centrally located pressure vessel in which all electronic systems and computational units are located. It is protected by a polycarbonate cover which serves as a viewfinder for the front camera. The vessel is placed in a skeletal polyacetyl frame which is light and versatile, allowing us to add various functions to our vehicle. The frame is reinforced with adenized aluminum pipes. The top two of them are responsible for buoyancy and Bottom two contain the proprietary balancing system. The robot is able to move due to eight brushless DC motors. Four of them are responsible for horizontal movement, while the other four help with the vertical maneuverability. Based on our experience, we are all aware of the crucial role of sensors in our project. One of key sensors in our robot is the Teledyne Marine Wayfinder DPL, which stands for Doppler Velocity Lock. It measures relative velocity between the instrument and the ground of the water body by periodically transmitting acoustic pulses in multiple beams that are scattered to the bottom. The headphone system, however, is designed to be able to determine the direction from which the acoustic signal arrives. The algorithm was based on the time difference between the signal reaching each of the headphones. For the purpose of altitude measurement and obstacle detection, two blue robotic speed sonars are used in the vehicle. An inertial AHRS sensor by XSense was applied to obtain information about the position, direction of movement, rotation in space, speed and acceleration of the vehicle. The core of our strategy is computer vision. By utilizing a yellow V5 neural network on images, Obtained with the OpenCV Python model, we detect key objects and paths. Necessary visual data is provided by three cameras. Front facing for detecting gates and props, bottom facing to navigate a chosen path, and last but not least, an effector mounted camera for precise object manipulation. Detection is used to various tasks, together with a marker dropper, torpedoes and specially designed gripper. We made sure the mechanism of the marker dropper is watertight. It consists of a basket with a ball inside, a servo-driven lock is responsible for releasing the payload at just the right moment when the drone is in the correct position. The whole mechanism is protected from floating by an oil-filled rubber casing. Another ace of our sleeve is DVL HRS Combo, which greatly improves spatial positioning of our robot by providing accurate velocity and depth data. Considering the most tasks require choosing the right prop, Based on the previously chosen side, there are going to be models trained for every prop. It is plausible to have just two models, one for each side, but it has been decided to give every prop its own model to keep the accuracy as high as possible and for the sake of modularity. Data for training the models consists of photos of our reproduction of the competition targets. Dataset size has been multiplied by additionally post-processing the initial data effects such as blur, noise, flipping, offsets, and distortions. For tasks involving pingers, the output from two headphones is used after a denoising pre-processing step. However, if audio input becomes unreliable or unnecessary, we might switch to using video input as a primary source of data at any given time. To solve tasks that require precise effector movement, the effector cam camera plays a crucial role. It helps to make sure that the objects are picked up quickly and held securely afterwards. Obviously, remote work was not easy for us, and giving up would be easier. But easier is not always better, so we've acted despite the adversities.
Having found ourselves in this challenging COVID situation, we've quickly adapted and applied new tools and techniques to our activities. We wanted to strengthen the cooperation between our teams specializing in individual parts of the project. To achieve that, we've created a detailed documentation that helps people with their new tasks. We also standardized the management system of our project. Now all data is stored in an online workspace, Podio. Thanks to that, each member of the team has access to information about currently performed tasks and their progress. That allows us to get a smooth flow of information and more effective teamwork. Each department now holds a regular online meeting where all members can share their ideas, present work results and plan future innovators. The departments themselves have come up with clever solutions to make the most of the lockdowns. For example, our construction team focused on conceptual work, developing design solutions and creating 3D models. A great effort has been put into prototype creation to improve parts that did not perform well enough in the past. For example, for the gripper, we carried up dozens of iterations to get the satisfactory results, producing all models by addictive manufacturing. Torpedoes were also a part which turned out to be problematic. We encountered difficulties with firing and reloading torpedoes. Learning from our past mistakes, we remade their propulsion system. We've abandoned the compressed gas solutions for the battery-powered propeller, which greatly reduced the potential risk of out-of-water ignition. We were able to test new features of the robot because we collaborated with local swimming pools. This turned out to give us a huge boost and allows us to apply new and better solutions for our project. To sum things up, we are very satisfied with all technologies implemented and improvements introduced in this version of the vehicle. We are positive it will greatly contribute to pursue tasks efficiently and finish them successfully.